Disclaimer, I do not own the clips or music shown. These are used for review and entertainment purposes. Thank you. Last time on Channel Camden. Camden has talked about the greatness of the 2012 Ninja Turtles series. And it came out last week about me talking about the characters in that series and what happened in the first two seasons. If you have not seen that video, go watch it right now because you're going to be very confused on what is going on. I'll put the link in the description. Watch it. Watch it now. Watch it. Watch it now. Or just, just watch it now. Godfathers and Godfathers, it's me, Camden, on channel Camden. So last we left you. And like again, you're going to be very confused on what I'm going to be talking about, so I'm, I'm just going to sum it up. TMNT 2012 was, was a show, okay? It was a show and a reboot of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And the last time I talked about the first two seasons of the show. This time I'm going to talk about seasons three through five. And basically what has happened from last we left. Okay, so what has happened was that the Krang invaded New York, and Leo came unconscious from the Shredder. Splinter has been knocked out, so Turtles, April, and Casey, they retreat and go hide at the farmhouse to train to become better and come back and fight their enemies. Hmm, where have I seen this before? But before I get into what happens in Season 3, I gotta go through a very significant change from the series. Yes, Leo's voice has changed. Leo's voice actor, Leo's voice actor has been like replaced because his original voice actor, Jason Biggs, has been fired because of his tweets on Twitter. So yeah, no, that. So so back then, cancel culture was still a thing. So, we have Chris Griffin himself, Seth Green, voicing Leonardo. So you went from this voice... Halt? Villain? When did we start talking like that? We're heroes. That, that's how heroes talk. All right, let's put old Mother Hubbard back in her cupboard. Dude, it literally hurts. This. My family freak. Honestly, I'm not against this choice because he does a great job voicing Leo Like he does a really good job. I'm going to say he's probably even better than Jason though Jason Biggs did a good job voicing Leo, but Seth Green does a fantastic job of showing Leo's mature side and him becoming the stronger part of the team and being the leader also explain how the guy's voice so deep is that his fight with the shredder gave Leo permanent damage to his throat. So there you go. So I'm a completely different person now, literally. Season three. So like I said, the turtles hide out and retreat to the farmhouse to try to get better at their skills and come back and defeat the Krang and Shredder. Well, you're me asking, how long it lasts? A 90s movie, of course, it, it don't take too long. It only takes like a few scenes, of course, and mainly it's a movie, not a show. 2003 series, it takes them like two and a half episodes to be in the farmhouse and for them to come back. How long does it take for the 2012 series? No way. Eight and a half episodes? At them being at a farmhouse? That really... It really has to take them that long? To earn them to get back to New York? Really? They really had to... Strain it for that long. Actuality, the farmhouse episodes aren't bad, but they're nowhere near the show at its best. It's kind of where the show is kind of at the kind of weakest. 
it's not bad, but it's just, it's just okay, I guess. Like, the characters just being themselves and everything, them fighting random mutants. Because, like, it, it just makes you wonder, at some point, they just gotta go to New York and stop the Krang. And, like I said, these episodes aren't that bad. It was kind of nice seeing Mikey hang out with the punk frogs. Also, the Dream Beavers was a very fun and entertaining episode. And as wild and crazy that episode was, it was crazily entertaining. I'm not gonna lie. It was one of those episodes that you watch, just not to get into some sort of art where you're just to watch it. You know, like a filler episode. Which these episodes are, by the way. Turtles meet literally Bigfoot. And then we we get another episode of, you know, Donnie being a simp. Here's what I haven't talked about in part one, but part two with Donnie liking April and Casey liking April. Does April notice either of this? I mean, it's pretty obvious, especially how Donnie and the fact, does it ever make April stop and think, wait, two guys like me, so I don't know. And she never talks to them about it. The girl keeps playing with his feelings, hugging them, and kissing him on the cheek. And then it's just not addressed in the next episode. After this episode, we, we don't really see uh, Donnie simping for April as much in the series. I don't see a whole episode on it, so nah, I don't know. But anyways, an, an aspect I really do like is that this arc it gives that the Turtles, April and Casey become closer to each other and they welcome April and Casey as a part of their family. And that's a great part. And also the brothers get closer, though they do argue and bicker a lot, like real life siblings. It's still great to see them become closer and show that they genuinely care about one another. Say it with me now. This is like this is like the third time I joked about this on my channel. Give up on family. And like I said, I don't have siblings, but I have the team, so this is what we got to ah, do. Why? Why do we have to do this? No, li listen. Okay. Okay, bro. So so uh um um we're going to go to science. Did you get all that? I think so. They have to go to New York, so Splinter sends the Turtles on a vision quest where they dress up in costumes, now in stores. Where you go on a quest to fight mystic versions of the Foot Clan that aren't real, but they're like visions and illusions. And they have to fight them to get stronger, so then they can be ready to go to New York. And this episode slaps! This is one of those episodes that I think I've probably watched the most of this series, because it was so cool oh not 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 because of the toyetic cat costumes but in general it was a very neat episode and nine-year-old me went thank gosh they'll finally go back to new york this is where the show gets really good again well before it wasn't bad it was just fine but here the turtles is back to turtles and they're <clears throat> Back to the sewers. Sorry for that terrible joke. Now, I also, another thing was, a lot of fans were wondering if there was a certain pig and rhino ever going to show up in the series. Well, I remember this one time, with me and that same cousin from that last video, and when we were Ninja Turtles fanatics, we paused the intro normal at numerous times of the new season and we said hey is that bebop and rocksteady and a bunch of fans got excited around the world bebop and rocksteady finally became a part of the series or technically they always were but only in their human forms i guess they were just doing the spectacular spider-man method of just having your villains always be there before they you know to turn turn into their iconic selves and Bebop and Rocksteady, they're a really great addition to the series. They're super humorous and just great in this show. And they're always entertaining. And they're probably one of my favorite villains of this show. 
And also, I haven't pointed out that Mikey loves to name his villains similar to Cisco and The Flash. Um, and it just so happens I am awesome at naming stuff. How about pork rind and chili cheese fry? Uh, yeah, not so good names. How about sprinkles and hot sauce? Yet. <laughs> how about, um... Rock so the turtles couldn't fight the Krang alone, so they also got help of the Mighty Mutanimals, certain characters that show up throughout the series, including Dr. Rockwell, which was a monkey that embarrassed Donnie in front of April, and Pete, which was a character probably no one cared about, to be, to be honest, Flash, who was a good guy now, and Leatherhead, which, which I, I don't need to explain. Excited. These guys are awesome. I hope they get their own comic someday. Okay. That's awesome. So then the turtles go to Dimension X in another toy attic costume. And then they save the city. And the Krang don't become as a prominent villain as they were in the series after this. Since that arc is done, now the turtles are have to face their main arch nemesis. The Shredder. And again, both villains are interesting in the show, but the Shredder is, of course, the main antagonist and the one that keeps you the most interested. And here, the Turtles' main objective is to stop Shredder and the Foot Clan once and for all for the rest of the season. And we also get to see Hun, who instead of being a big bulky guy, is a Bruce Lee type. And then we get Mondo Gecko, dude! And he was played by Mikey from the original 90s movie. <laughs> we get Muckman. <laughs> and Karai is evil again. Not mind controlled, but still. And then Renette shows up, you know, the Time Master in training. Shows up and helps the turtles, and they go through time. Been chased by this monster named Savanti Romero, and the turtles go through different time periods, like the medieval times and everything, and it's really entertaining. And the two-parter is very, very fun, and it's also titled Turtles in Time. Oh, so like that awesome video game that is super, super fun. Also, the name of that movie that a certain other nerd on the internet got angry at. But then again, yeah, that arc is super fun, and it eventually leads to them going back in time to when Tang Shin was alive, and Shredder and Splinter still got along. Uh, kind of. Yeah, they went back in time to witness everything that happened while interfering with time a little bit. So yeah, basically, uh, Shredder and Splinter were raised together and were once brothers, but then a woman got between them. Tang Shin, who Splinter already married and had a daughter, Miwa, and then it eventually leads to Shredder becoming part of the Foot Clan and leading them, and then he fights Splinter to the death, and it leads to him killing Tang Shin. I'll repeat that again. Two guys that were trained under the same order and kind of gotten along together right and eventually and the darker one becomes a part of the evil order and starts leading it even and then eventually killing the woman he loves and then and then they fight and uh, with a bunch of fire and things all around them and then and and then the darker one also gets burnt and and then a child that's like or children that's completely clueless on who is their real parent this happens all jokes aside this was a great two-parter and i loved it and it was awesome and it was probably one of my favorite episodes of the whole series that's right ninja we yokai will steal all of your souls through your butt <laughs> your butt I know it's not the 2012 series with a crazy finale. And now we're introduced to a character named Bishop. And now, nine-year-old me found this name of this particular character very familiar. Oh, yo, 
Yo! It's Bishop from the 2003 series. Oh my gosh! This guy was cunning, crazy, intimidating. He, it seemed like he was just a normal guy. No, he wasn't. He was immortal. But he... He kept making the turtles fumble and just... He was a very difficult enemy to beat. He almost seemed as unstoppable as the Shredder. He's he's just a Ultram in this version. It, this bishop is still not bad though. He warns the turtles that the Triceratons are coming to destroy planet Earth and are gonna use a black hole generator to swallow Earth into a black hole. And this season finale was also very entertaining. And it kind of topped the last season. Actually, no, it's on par. But it was very entertaining to watch. And it was nice to see these new villains, the Triceratons. Though they're not exactly new since I I, 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 I saw them in the 2003 series as well. So the Triceratons are too much just for the good guys to handle. So they ask shredder for help and it don't seem too bad until Joe has did the unthinkable are you ready in five four three two Okay, so, when I was nine, I was watching this, and before then, I was aware of the limitations of children's television, and I always thought, no one could die in a cartoon, it's for kids, no one could die, and we saw Master Splinter die on live, on 4K, and live television. He doesn't die permanently, but still. So, then, the bomb went off. And Shredder explicitly says, I don't care if the world ends. I finally won! Man is such a hater, such a hater, that he does not care if the world ends, himself included. But if Splinter dies and he wins, that's the only thing he cares about. Oh, is you want another character that, that's familiar in Turtles history? But no, I'm not there yet. I'm not. I have a story to tell. Okay, so, um, it was one morning, I was watching the episode, and I couldn't watch the entire thing. I had to leave. And then, when I came back home, my cousin came over as well. He told me what happened in the episode, and I was like, no, that can't happen. It's a Nickelodeon show. So then, in the next morning, I went to school, and like, three kids came to my table because they knew how obsessed with Ninja Turtles I was. And they said, hey, did you see how Splinter got stabbed by Shredder? Hey, did you see how Splinter got stabbed? And I was like, what, what are you talking about? And then it was at that point where I started to believe that it actually happened. And then I watched the episode and then there you go. But then, um, like I said, Fugitoid shows up and then saves them. Ending with another cliffhanger. So what did I think of this season? Season 3 was an amazing season. At first it got a bit fillery, but it still wasn't bad. But the entire season is awesome. It's on par with season two. 
and has great stories, and the characters are expanded a bit, and we love the new additions to the show, like Bebop and Rocksteady, Mondo, Gecko, and its episodes are still amazingly entertaining. And its finale was so intense and surprising that even me going back and watching the episode, it still has my jaw dropped. Season 4 So, yeah, like I said, Earth blew up. So, our new character, but not so new, Fugitoid, Scrooge McDuck, takes the turtles back in time to stop the Earth from blowing up before it even happens. And also, can we point out how amazing it is that this show got a fourth season? Some shows have cliffhangers, and they don't continue them because they get cancelled. Good morning or cancellation. Well yeah, the turtles, they're in space. They have to go back in time and stop Triceratons from getting the black hole generator. And these space episodes are also really entertaining. It's nice to see the turtles get out the sewer in a while. When it's not a farmhouse. But yeah, this this arc is really fun to see. The turtles going to space doing super very unique adventures, and also meeting Lord Drake from the Red Sky seasons of the original cartoon. Also meeting Flat Raph's love interest that was only in one episode of the original cartoon. Mona Lisa showing up in this series as well. That's really cool. And then there was like a, a special that was 2D. That was basically like Superhero Squad, but for the Ninja Turtles. You know, being based off a toy line and having goofier designs. It's not canon to the show, but I just feel like I need to mention that. Because, uh, at this point I feel it's obligatory to mention the Superhero Squad show on my channel. It also has a lighter tone. Speaking of tone! After that dark and depressing finale of season 3, the, t the show seemingly becomes a bit lighter again. But still not afraid to have dark moments. Because I think that finale just changed the show. Each special Turtles Forever. Well, you want to see him do it again? This, yes, the original cartoon Ninja Turtles. They show up again for Ninja Turtles No Way Home. And this episode was awesome with all the references and everything. And also another thing, they brought back the old Turtles voice actors. But it was nice seeing them again. And especially seeing them in 3D. That was awesome as well. Eventually, you know, the turtles gotta go home and stop the black hole generator. And they do, and they succeed this time. And of course, Splinter is alive again. As you know, it's a kid show, surely. And yep, the turtles are back home just like that. Everything's back to normal. Except Shredder has been defeated by Splinter. Like, Splinter gave Shredder a really bad whooping. Like, he just... So bad that Shredder, he's out of bed, and he's just... <coughs> Stockman. <coughs> Stockman, you lowly bug, you come, come here. And then Karai is no longer evil. She's trying to run her own foot plan. And they meet the new character, Shimigani, which Mikey has a crush on, which, again, with the turtles liking humans again. And then we get an episode where that totally does not parody Batman at all. <laughs> so Raph's bug phobia, and again, and Emo Leo. But there's this great reference, though. This is it! 
still can't believe you were working with Karai behind Splinter's back. You don't have to rub it in. Just saying. That sounds more like me. Remember when I wanted to dress up as the Night Watcher vigilante and you talked me out of it? You can always be Turf Lytle's faithful sidekick, Matt. So, also, April gets this crystal, this alien crystal, that is like a alien bird and it consumes her and she becomes like really evil and it possesses her and you know how she has mind power wait a second it just turn april o'neill into dark phoenix <laughs> wow they they really did turn her into jean gray i mean don't forget the mutant part of teenage mutant ninja turtles so you know, to defeat your enemy, you gotta use his advantage against him. So this man Shredder turns into a mutant himself. He turns into Super Shredder. Yes, that Super Shredder from the Ninja Turtles 2. Yo, are they gonna start dancing now? <laughs> go Ninja, go Ninja, go! So yep. Like I said, this man Shredder is mutated himself. We get to see his heart beating, claws come out of his knuckles, and he's just, he's, he's straight up lost it at this point. At this point, he's sick in the head. Whole count of everything he did. List of things Shredder did includes when he was brothers with Splinter, a woman got in the way of them. So then, <laughs> he was in love with Tang Shin as well while she was married with Splinter and then he eventually kills his kills Tang Shin while he was in love with her and then blames it on Splinter then steals Splinter's daughter Niwa takes the birth certificate scribbles over the name Miwa and puts Karai and the father where it says Hamato Yoshi scribbles it and says Oroku Saki and then <laughs> Trains her to be an assassin for her to kill Splinter. Then years later, he saw a ninja star on the TV, went from Japan to New York, and said, Oh, I see. The turtles. They're trained by Splinter. And he straight up violates 15-year-olds <laughs> because they're being trained under Splinter. Because he couldn't just squash beef that was from like 16 years ago. And then... When Karai later found out who her real father was, he used her as bait, which led to her being mutated into a mutant snake, blames it on Splinter again, and then he finds Leo during the Krang invasion, messes up his throat, and breaks his leg, and makes him into a coma. And then, when he finds Karai, he mind controls her, with a brain worm, she eventually breaks free. And then, when they are in the middle of stopping the Triceratons from blowing up the Earth, Shredder stabs Splinter with the world blowing up, and Shredder saying, I do not care if the world blows up, long as the Splinter is dead. So then, when he went back in time and stopped it, Shredder mutated himself into Super Shredder to kill turtles, Splinter, April, Casey, the Mutanimals, and everyone, just straight up everyone. Oh my gosh, this man Shredder's been praying on her downfall. Yeah, Shredder is, at this point, he is just as bad as like Reverse Flash at this point, at being a hater. This man has went to the stink meaner school of hating. At this point, I bet he's like Eddie Brock in Spider-Man 3 and goes to church just to pray to God and asks God every day if he could kill the turtles and Splinter. And, uh, speaking of, um, of, uh, a Splinter. <sighs> Not again! <laughs> This is a cartoon about four turtles that eat pizza. Why? 
sometimes we be having the wildest of episodes. We see the turtles meet with Adam West Batman parodies. We see them fight fungus. Dream beavers. That were knockoff, like, evil versions of Caribers. And then we see them go into Mikey's mind. Literally, yes. That, there's that. We see them fight a monster made out of pizza. And then we have episodes like this. Like, how do you go from a really fun and goofy adventure with Mikey making one-liners, Donnie being a simp, Raph being sarcastic, and then we have moments like these. How do you do that? How? Mind you, this is a cartoon on Nickelodeon about tur four turtles that live in a sewer. Trained by a rat master to learn ninjutsu, they eat pizza, and they go out around New York to fight crime, and they somehow make me feel emotional. I wonder how it felt pitching that to them. And then, Shredder kills Splinter. So that with the help of Fugitoid or Renette, they're going to go back in time and stop it, right? Right? He's dead. For reals this time. We're a kid show on Nickelodeon, sir. We we can't do that. I went to the Michael Jordan school. Forget them kids, man. Who cares? We're going to teach them how it works in the real world, okay? In the real world, people die every day. <laughs> I need some fairly odd parents right now. Aww. To say goodbye to Master Splinter. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That after this episode ended, they had the audacity to play Loud House right after Little Me was grieving Splinter's death. You think I'm in the mood for whatever shenanigans Lincoln Loud is up to after seeing Splinter get stabbed and thrown off a building? So then, of course, the turtles have their final battle with the Shredder, and they're all wearing clothes from Hot Topic. And this fight was nail-biting interesting, and they were hyping this up for four seasons. It's like we knew that this was meant to happen, this entire show, that the turtles was eventually meant to beat Shredder for the final time. Another thing that was into the, this season was I think even though some people noticed it was weird that what was the point of killing Splinter two times well I think it was always meant to happen it was like after the season 3 finale and they saved Earth it seemed it was just hints that Splinter wasn't going to be around this show that much longer anyways I think that the season 3 finale was hints and was a sign that Splinter isn't going to be here forever. Their time travel shenanigans only de delayed his death. It was, uh, you know how in like Tyler Perry movies where, or any type of 2000s black movies where, uh, the grandma is dying and she gives that. I'm sick. Look, like she's sick the entire movie, and she gives the last lessons to her children and grandchildren. Splinter gave that look on the last few episodes. Like every episode, he gave that look. My sons, Donnie, stop being a simp. Raphael, stop being angry at everything. Leonardo, stop being scared of everything. You're a great leader, my son. Alright, I guess that's it for season four. Season four, well not as good as season two or season three, was a great season. And it also was just one of those moments that me as a young kid was really interested in and it was really wondering what was, was going to happen to these characters. And it showed how truly uh, the writers did a great job with the Ninja Turtles. And Splinter's death was on the level of Mufasa's death in Lion King. And just 
still. They had very entertaining episodes, like them being in space, them meeting the original turtles, and things like that. But at the end, it was one of the most, probably the most emotional out of all the seasons. And it's probably the saddest one. Alright, anyways, now on to season to Season 5. Season 5, which was the last season of the show, which also led to a certain other series. That certain series is awesome. I don't care what the haters say. Season is not as overarching story driven, and they retitled the show to Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, or just separate arcs of the turtles just going on random adventures. Like them during Halloween or during the distant future or th and things like that. So I won't be going as in depth with this season. But this season was super entertaining. It also has a new intro. <laughs> we have an arc about Kavaxis, a demon voiced by Mark Hamill where they have to fight. And they try to revive the Shredder. An arc with Mona Lisa coming back and the Neutralizer. And then they team up with Usagi Ujimbo. That arc was super cool. Pretty cool Halloween special. An arc that's the alternate future that's not canon confirmed by the creators of the show. Where Raph is in an apocalyptic alternate future where humans don't exist. And it's super depressing and sad. Originally, it was supposed to be the last episode, but, you know, Nickelodeon thought that was too dark, so the actual last episode was. And then they team up with the 80s Turtles again. That was also pretty cool. And then this pretty good music video of Mikey singing about Ice Cream Kitty. You know, his ice cream cat that he has. And I feel that this was the actual finale of the show, because since it was a huge tribute to the entire series, as it references everything. That's pretty much season five, so I don't have to go in depth with it. Season five is pretty good overall. So, uh, I guess that's it. Think of it. It's kind of crazy how this little franchise about four mutant turtles living in a sewer, eating pizza, being trained by a rat master to fight a villain in a cheese grater. And it went on for so long. I think it's awesome that it really gravitated towards everyone for 30 plus years. They were able to do it, able to do it again. 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 And again. And they don't seem like stopping anytime soon. The 2012 Ninja Turtles series Shows why we love the turtles. Now on the surface, it looks like a show about four turtles just going around, going on crazy adventures. But at heart, it's about family, brotherhood, friendships, and what it truly means to be heroes, no matter what age you are. And it inspired a lot of kids out there that they could do whatever they want to do. Looking at these four teenage brothers going on crazy adventures and everything. With these great, fantastic characters. Heroes and villains. They're both great. Even when they're not always written at their best certain episodes. They're still interesting nonetheless. I don't only love this show because of nostalgia. I love it because it's a truly a great show. I love it because it's a truly entertaining show. Even how goofy the concept sounds. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and yet it will still remain to be successful. These little comic book characters were made all thanks to a tax refund and a loan from the creator's uncle. And look at them now. Lean Green Fighting Machines. And I love, still love this series. And this show made me respect them as much as other comic book characters like Spider-Man, Batman or Superman because they truly are there are superheroes not all heroes wear capes But yeah, I really recommend watching this show It is awesome, and you'll have a great time watching it Even though it may be hard watching it at times I give this show a 10 donuts 
Hope you guys have a great time and like, comment, not a lean comment, and subscribe.